Today, we'll hear news from the FDA, reports of promising treatments for resistance in lung cancer, and data coming out of the 2015 International Symposium on MDS. All this and more starts right now on OncLive News Network. Hello and welcome. I'm Laura Jones. First, nuvolumab has already been approved by the FDA in the lung cancer setting. And now, patients with untreated melanoma may also reap the benefits of this checkpoint inhibitor. The FDA has assigned a priority review designation to the PD-1 inhibitor nuvolumab as a treatment for previously untreated patients with unresectable or metastatic melanoma that had no BRAF mutation. Similarly, the European Medicines Agency has also recommended approval of the drug for use as first-line treatment in this same population. Nivolumab is the first checkpoint inhibitor immunotherapy to be recommended for approval in Europe. These actions were based on the positive data coming from the Checkmate 066 trial, which compared nivolumab with decarbazine in the front line. Nivolumab significantly extended overall and progression-free survival and produced superior responses. Under the expedited process, the action date for the FDA's decision is August 27, 2015. Other news from the FDA, the oncolytic immunotherapy TVEC received a recommendation for approval as a treatment for patients with advanced melanoma. After a joint meeting of ODAC and CTGTAC, members voted 22 to 1 to move this agent forward in the approval process. Dr. Howard Kaufman from Rutgers in New Jersey describes TVEC and its trial data. I, I've been studying a form of oncolytic virus immunotherapy for many years now, and so one of the agents that we've been using is called telemagine leherpa-repvec, or TVEC for short. It's an oncolytic herpes virus that expresses the human GMCSF gene. And so we think that this agent mediates a tumor regression in two ways, one by directly killing the tumor cells after injection, and then also by stimulating an immune response. So there's a recent uh, large randomized phase three study, uh, which was a positive study and demonstrated that the TVEC did induce a, a, a durable response rate in patients with advanced melanoma compared to control. Uh, so this is very exciting and um, you know, whether or not this will ultimately be approved, we, we need to wait and see. But studies are already underway combining it with other forms of immunotherapy, such as the checkpoint inhibitors, with very exciting uh, results uh, being seen already. A final approval decision from the FDA is scheduled by October 27, 2015. Next, two papers published in the recent New England Journal of Medicine showed promising activity for third-generation EGFR-targeted TKIs rosalitinib and AZD-9291. In separate studies, these agents each demonstrated superior responses in patients with non-small cell lung cancer with the acquired resistance mutation T790M. Dr. Mark Szynski from the University of Pittsburgh summarizes the clinical relevance of these data. Third generation agents were also developed with an intent to um, be active against the major secondary mutation for resistance that we see in exon 20, the so-called T790M mutation, which occurs in about 50 to 60 percent of patients with known EGFR mutations after exposure to first, second uh, generation TKIs. So it's a major issue with regard to the mechanism of resistance and so uh, as a target it, it is of high priority. And that's where rosalitinib and AZD9291 come in. Those are the two lead third generation compounds which we saw some very exciting data at, at ASCO this year. Um, and uh, both of them have been evaluated both in T790M negative and positive. We focused on the T790M positive population because the, the level of activity in that population is quite remarkable. Uh, remember, these are patients who have typically been on uh, a first or second generation TKI and then at the time of progression transition to that and response rates are, are north of 50 percent to PFS is you know a, a around a year or, or greater in this setting um, and um, 
the, the majority of that benefit is seen in the T790M positive population. Now, I will point out that these drugs also seem to have a lower level of activity in T, the T790M negative population. So uh, I don't think we should necessarily throw them out in the negative population, but the current development is really focusing on T790M positive uh, patients. Both agents have received FDA breakthrough therapy designations and are heading toward approval. The 13th International Symposium on MDS took place in Washington, D.C. last week. First, Dr. Valeria Santini from the University of Florence in Italy presented more data from the MDS-005 trial with lenalidomide compared with placebo in low to intermediate risk patients with non-deletion 5Q MDS. Previous analyses demonstrated lenalidomide's ability to achieve red blood cell transfusion independence, and this additional analysis touches on a very important issue for patients with MDS, quality of life. After 24 weeks of treatment, lenalidomide was associated with improved health-related quality of life scores in five pre-selected domains, though significant benefit was only observed in emotional functioning. In addition, a significant improvement in all five quality of life domains was observed in patients who had achieved red blood cell transfusion independence. In a phase two single arm trial, treatment with l significantly improved cytopenias in patients with low to intermediate to risk MDS. In 19 evaluable patients at 16 weeks, 53% experienced hematologic improvements in platelet counts, erythrocytes, and absolute neutrophil counts. Dr. Danielle Townsley from National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute noted that it is a well-tolerated drug without any obvious acceleration of progression. Townsley concluded, further trials are indicated in low-risk MDS, and we might be able to evaluate other subtypes of MDS. Until these trials are done, this drug should not be used off-trial for MDS. For more details on these and other stories, as well as interviews with experts from the meeting, please visit the website on the screen. Finally, in conjunction with the MDS Symposium, we would like to highlight the OncLive Insights program titled Management of Chronic Iron Overload in Myelodysplastic Syndrome. In this series of videos, Dr. Azra Raza describes strategies for reducing the risk of and managing patients with iron overload and provides a case example to illustrate the key points of using iron chelation therapy. To view these practical videos, please visit the website on your screen. And that'll do it for today. We thank you so much for watching Unc Live News Network. I'm Laura Jones. We'll see you next time.